So, the heat's turned, the knives are slicing, and the pots are bubbling in an arena of high-stakes culinary battles. We're not just talking about any kitchen. It's the legendary Hell's Kitchen, where only the fiercest of chefs survive. You may think you know the recipe. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Now, you know the man, the myth, the legend, Gordon frickin' Ramsay. Culinary mastermind with a razor-sharp tongue and a taste for perfection. Oh, and did I mention he's got eyes that can spot a drop of sweat on your brow from across the room? You got any kind of nervousness, he's gonna sniff it out, and then he's gonna criticize you for it being a stinky kind of nervousness rather than the nice one. Either way, he's the real deal, and the chefs who step into his domain better be ready for the challenge of their lives. Here's the twist, though. Sometimes, just sometimes, really, a chef comes along who impresses the hell out of Gordon himself. It's like a blue moon, ultra rare. That's where the suspense kicks in, though, because you never know when it's gonna happen or who's gonna do it. But when it does, trust me, Gordon's gonna make it known. Best service so far in Hell's Kitchen. It's a culinary battlefield, and these chefs are warriors fighting for the ultimate prize. Gordon's not of approval, and maybe some internet points as well. With every dish they serve, they're bearing their souls, pushing their limits, and giving it their all. Can you feel the suspense building? There we go. The pressure's on, and only the best of the best will rise to the top. So buckle in and get your forks and knives out, because you're about to witness the sweat, the tears, and the moments when even Gordon's jaw dropped in awe. The twelfth episode of season four was the Black Jacket Dinner Service. The chefs were very close to being in the final. The four chefs were gunning for a top three spot and were pumped to give an impressive performance. As the first ticket came in, Corey Erling and Jen Gavin were on top of their communication, and thanks to this, they were both able to send out their dishes to the past. But just because they sent the dishes out in time doesn't mean they turned out right. Every other dish that makes it to the pass has to go through Gordon's approval. So what was it this time? A pass or a fail? Well, only one way to find out. Yeah, chef. Nicely cooked the scallops. Thank you. The dinner service actually started off on a great note. The appetizers were going out at a great pace, but the momentum came to a crashing halt when Jen decided to shut herself out from the rest of the world. That, of course, did frustrate everybody. Given Jen's history in the competition up to this point, I bet she didn't even care about the fact that cornering herself was going to hinder everyone else. Nevertheless, Gordon couldn't deal with her inconsistency. Yes, Chef! Have you switched off now? Not at all, Chef! Not at all! The rice is mush! What are you doing? Sometime later, the top four were back in the game. We moved to the entree. Corey impressed Gordon with her perfectly cooked salmon. But of course, when everything seemed to be going well, Christina made a massive blunder when she took the garnishes of the pass for the entrees. While she was bang on when it came to her timing, she forgot to communicate a very important detail. She forgot to inform Gordon that the handle was too hot to handle with bare hands. And I think you can guess what might have happened after that little slip. Shit. Gordon was furious, and well, I don't blame him at all. Whether intentionally or not, Christina had just burnt him. And going by his facial expression, it definitely was not a little one. Thick cow? Yes, chef. Handles are over the stove. At least say something to somebody, yes? yes? Chef. Yeah, now you're just acting like a fing idiot, yes? No, chef. Of course, all Christina could do was give him a sad face before following through with the rest of her work. And so did Gordon. I'm sure Christina learned a huge lesson. Th I mean, she actually did end up burning Gordon Ramsay himself. That's not something that you're gonna be able to forget easy. But you know what? Looked like the service just wasn't going her way. I'm sure it must have been the mounting pressure, but she apparently learned nothing from her screw-up just before. <laughs> Yeah, she forgot to inform Gordon that the pan was hot. Again. You know, if she does it for a third time, I wonder if she gets a free sandwich. Probably a knuckle sandwich from Gordon Rams himself. Look, I don't know if she did that intentionally. I mean, who would, right? Basic common decency. But still, she burned Gordon twice. You gotta wonder what the hell she was thinking. Gordon, obviously not looking for a third branding at Christina's hands, made sure she snapped out of her trance. No, no. You're not even, you're not, you're not even f***ing telling me. He poured water on the handle. Oh. If a pan handle is over the f***ing flame, say something, will you please, yeah? Yes, Chef. Wake up! Yes, Chef. Uh, wait a second, let me look at the script here. Uh, what, wasn't this video supposed to be about great dinner services? Oh, okay, here we go, okay, okay. I know, I know, you can hardly blame me for getting off track. Where were we? Oh yeah, soon enough things started to do take a turn for a better though. But of course, there were a few hiccups here and there. I mean, really, what service doesn't have a few screw ups? When the team was working on appetizers and entrees together, Corey needed Jen to communicate with her because Corey had to know when she had to drop the scallops. Like, those things go from raw to perfect in like three minutes, and from perfect to shoe leather three seconds after hitting that sweet spot. But no, Jen was no help. Time. No. She 
just wanted to concentrate on one thing, so it's no surprise that Jen was absolutely not a team player. Her overall vibe showed that much and more. Sorry. Where you see, right from day one, she didn't care much about others. Being a team player is one of the most important things for a chef, and Jen looked like she had never heard of the concept. Despite all the frustration, none of the contestants called her out, and so Gordon stepped in to get it done. Talk to them. It's not about you now, it's about the fucking Hell's Kitchen team. Yes, yeah, chef, coming right up. Yeah, I, I always do love it when Gordon berated Jen. She really did need it, and since she was completely jeopardizing the entire team's flow, it was certainly warrant. Anyway, despite all the problems they faced, the team finished all the entries within an hour. And now the top four only had to worry about the entrees and desserts. But that's when Corey's fish made it back to the past for being raw. Raw. When you put something up there and you're feeling... Thankfully, Corey dashed toward her station and fixed her mistake just in time. Although she was apprehensive, her refire was accepted and the team was back on track. Meanwhile, Petroza left Gordon feeling pretty good with his perfectly cooked beef wellingtons despite the mess at his station. I want it. Your meat's been excellent. Yes, chef. Finally tonight, Chef Ramsay did see past the mess. An hour and a half into the dinner service, the top four rallied all the tickets and finished out the dinner smoothly. Seeing all the chaos and heat in the kitchen, I never thought they would end on a high note. Keep in mind, we haven't heard what Gordon has to say yet. Now, don't forget this is the same man who got burned twice in one service, and he wasn't even cooking you, and I'm sure he wasn't too happy about it. And just like you'd expect post the dinner service and all the chefs were lined up, Gordon brought with him a ton of tension. Just when you thought he'd erupt, bam! Ended up surprising everybody. Tonight was extraordinary. Wow, the more you watch, the more I'm convinced that Gordon is a kick-ass actor. Could any of you tell that he was just kidding? Those fiery eyes, the stern voice. Ugh, damn. Anyone could shit their pants with just one stare down with him at the other end. Just as shrewd as he is, though, he's also an equally big prankster. I mean, just look at him. Giving all these mini heart attacks, the tension among the contestants was palpable. Starting off with this epic episode of Hell's Kitchen from season 18, where a bunch of past runner-ups and some new kitchen stars were thrown down on the culinary battlefield. And you know how it goes. This isn't an ordinary service, oh no. It's the signature dish challenge, and that's gotten these chefs all fired up. Gordon knows how to give the contestants a heart attack, and that's what makes it so thrilling for both audiences and contestants. Maybe less contestants, actually. Hold up, though, because we're focusing on a particularly juicy part. The risotto showdown, and boy, did they bring the heat. I'm not a big fan of relish, but on the risotto, it tastes delicious. Uh, creative. Now, you know how competitive things get up here, am I right? Every chef brought their A-game, but there was this one magical moment that had Gordon floored. You're probably dying to know who the culinary wizard behind this mind-blowing risotto was, right? Well, let's just say they're wearing a grin from ear to ear because impressing Gordon's no easy feat. Anyway, cut to the moment itself. Gizzy is the day's star, and you'll soon know exactly why. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, man. When those veteran chefs revealed themselves, Gizzy was as proud as could be. Like, just look at her, you guys. Didn't even bat an eye, and she honestly did it like a boss. Seriously, she had her game face on, ready to show them that a new generation of chef was here to rock. So while the veterans were busy reminiscing about the good old days back when Chef Boy RD was a big old thing, Gizzy was cooking up a storm with some avant-garde culinary fusion. She wasn't intimidated by their fancy reps or their Michelin stars, because she knew she had something unique to bring to the table. As Gordon might put it, actual f***ing taste. Boy, she did not disappoint either. Some of these rookie dishes, I don't think they understand that this is going on the Hell's Kitchen menu. Gizzy's doesn't even have a protein. You got no backup of great proteins. During the creative risotto challenge, Gizzy took the creative part of it to heart. While everyone else was talking about those proteins, she decided to go all in on a vegetarian risotto. Talk about breaking the mold and thinking outside the box. However, when it was her turn to face the fiery judgment of Gordon, Gizzy stepped up with confidence. Her heart was racing, but she knew she had something special on that plate. And well, this is what she presented. Vegetarian dish in Hell's Kitchen. What are you, stupid? There's no way. As Goran tasted her vegetarian risotto, you could see Gizzy holding her breath, hoping for high praises from the culinary kingpin himself. And trust me, the heat and hearts throbbing could be felt from a mile away. Gizzy. It's... It's delicious. The moment of truth arrived and Gordon's face lit up like a Christmas tree. He praised her dish like it was the best thing he'd ever tasted and you could see Gizzy's eyes sparkle with pride and a bit of relief. You know what? Deserved every last bit of it. But wait, gets even better. Gizzy's vegetarian risotto knocked out tea dishes to boot. Let's be real, that win was major validation for Gizzy. She showed the world that being creative and bold is the way to be. Gizzy's confidence wasn't misplaced in the slightest. Those veterans couldn't help but raise their brows and give her the props they deserved. But 
but slightly more hesitantly, many had a, oh, you just got lucky look on their faces as well. Okay, first off, y'all suck. Did I mention how active she was on social media too? She kept her fans updated about the whole show. Pretty sweet thing to do, am I right? I mean, who doesn't like some insider info? But I'm here for it. However, in this next dinner show, one team did so well that they ended up making history on the show. It was the opening night of season 13, and all 18 chefs were ready to show Gordon what they were made of. First thing they needed to show him was their ability to work as a team. With both the teams ready to throw down, everybody was motivated to give a good service. That night, a tableside appetizer, a prawn scampi, were served, and it was assigned to Deneen and Mr. 100%, but only Sterling. Scampi will be served by Deneen from the red team and Sterling from the blue. That night, the MVP was the red team, and they absolutely killed it, but let the blue team in the dust. The blue team was the first one to receive their tickets, but they completely failed to deliver dishes anywhere near per cook. On top of that, their communication was at its worst so far. Taste! Don't say anything. Taste it! Jump in! Taste it! What's that missing? Salt. Yeah, salt. salt absolutely. Oh, fuck off. However, right from the start, the red team was on fire. Yeah. Okay. There was one problem, though, and that's when the red team was working on the last appetizer. Janai, who was working on the last scallops order, sent eight scallops instead of ten. Although the issue was fixed, how they did it was hilarious. I'm missing two scallops. So funny. <laughs> Last appetizer leaving the kitchen, the red team moved on to the entree. As for the blue team, it just wasn't their day. They were still stuck on the first ticket. Finally, after 53 long minutes, they were able to serve their first table. By this time, I'm sure most of their customers were hangry as all hell. Sorry, sir. Once the snowball starts, man, it doesn't stop. Roll! In the meantime, the red team's momentum was chef's kiss. They were sending those entrees out at a great pace. I'm getting hungry just reading this. Honestly though, Gordon didn't have to worry about one side of the kitchen. Even sous chef Andy seemed to be happy with her team. They're perfectly done. Thank you, chef. Yes. Nice. Up. On the other side, the blue team was doing their best to catch up with their appetizers. But with the customers getting impatient with the wait, Gordon had no choice but to move them onto the entrees. The season it, bro. Come on, guys. Despite that, the blue team continued to sink deeper into the depths of failure. Gordon, meanwhile, had had enough by that point and kicked them all out. You, you, and you, fuck off. Get out. Hey, don't worry. At least one team was still in there kicking ass and leaving the customers satisfied. The Red Kitchen finished their service as smooth as butter. Guess what? This was the first ever opening night where a team had given such a strong performance. Up until the 10th season, either both the teams or a bunch of people were kicked out, but the Red Team hit the ground running and rocked the service. <laughs> Won. Come to think of it, I wonder what happened to the blue team's customers. Did somebody feed them after the blue team got the boot? Usually, Gordon gets the team who finished their tickets first to complete the service for the other team as well. But none of that was shown in this episode. So, were the guests asked to leave, or did the sous chef finish the service? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear it. While you think about that, let me head over to this next service. This one comes from Season 17. One team not only performed flawlessly, but also completely annihilated their rival. So, what happened is, in the 8th episode, episode of the season, there were 11 remaining chefs who were all set to prove their worth to Gordon. With both teams having unbearable chefs, being Robin and Elise, both teams were hoping for a good and, dare I say, normal service. However, the red team failed to deliver, the blue team ran circles around them. By the way, have I mentioned a special caviar bellini being added to the menu yet? Chef, open house kitchen, please. Let's go. Silver's up. The blue team was the first one to receive their ticket. It was all up to Millie and Robin to send out the perfect appetite. And well, the duo lived up to it. The entire batch of appetite were sent out without either chef breaking a sweat. Thank you, chef. I told you. But in the red kitchen, at least was struggling with the caviar bellini, which proved to be a harbinger of their will come. Pepper that. Uh, no, that's fine. Elise and I have history. That's because soon after, the red team sank. Real, real bad. Thing is, it wasn't just Elise. Manda's sluggish performance certainly do them any favors either. Lost your tails right here. There's four here. girls on no, fish. Come on. I'm trying to I help know, you. I know you are. There's right. four on fish. Don't yes, know. chef. Do you want John to help as well? While the red team was barely treading water, the blue team aced the service like never before. Eventually, both teams managed to push out both their appetizer entrees, but it was only the blue team that got any sort of praise for Gordon. When Benjamin sent out his lamb, Gordon was certainly impressed. Guys, we're gonna keep this up. Killing it. Come on. Gordon really appreciates well-cooked meat, because every different type of meat has to be cooked to a different temp. It turns out perfect, though? Well, he never fails to appreciate the chef's hard work. Has got to remain. Yes, chef! Yes, chef! 
Anyway, 50 minutes into the dinner service, the red team was struggling real bad, while the blue team pushed out entree after entree like it was no big deal. Please. Herd, one minute. Walk the uh, garnish, bro. Herd. Herd. I'm walking. Lamb coming to the pa The communication between the blue team was great, and the symphony, just like Millie said, was all star. Blue team are off to a flawless start. That lamb is peaceful. Thank Absolutely you, Chef. peaceful. Come on, guys. The blue team has good momentum. While the red team kept floundering, the blue team was close to finishing their service, but then Robin ended up annoying her teammates by calling them baby. Really, Robin? Can you ever be serious for once? Well, Gordon made sure she got the memo. She totally deserved it. Forget the baby. Just sound like yeah. With the red team sending out more and more unacceptable dishes, Gordon had enough of them and called over all the all-stars of the night to help salvage the situation. As the red team got kicked out, the blue team worked their magic and made sure that no red team diners left hungry. Gordon was incredibly pleased with the blue team, made sure they knew it. In the red kitchen. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. off, please. Send the desserts. Thank you. This might be one of the strongest performances from the blue team. Every single dish that went out was perfect. Portion size, the temperature. Really, it was a picture-perfect service that was served up. It's not uncommon for one team to absolutely demolish the other on this show. So the main protein challenge was on and the heat was turning up in Hell's Kitchen. Each chef had an individual collage presented to them and when Petroza lifted his, guess what he got? A good old serving of chicken. But what is Gordon without his iconic shouting? Petroza was on the receiving end of a lot of it. Get your shit down. You can't slice something no. stunning on top of something shit. My God. Yeah. But hold up, Petroza wasn't playing around with any ordinary chicken dish. Nah, he was working on something a little more special. So he went ahead with a bold strategy, stuffing the chicken. And what was the result, you might ask? A delicious portion of prosciutto, duck confit, and veggies all nestled inside that juicy chicken breast. My mouth's watering, actually. Either way, sounds good to me, but let's see what the master has to say about it. When it was his turn to present his stuffed masterpiece to Gordon, Petroza was both nervous and excited. The previous yelling probably didn't help either. Either way, as Gordon took a bite, you could see a sly smile creeping across his face. I've never seen one individual do so much to a breast. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Gordon was impressed as hell. He couldn't help but joke about it saying, I've never seen anyone do so much with a breast. You know Gordon's compliments are like culinary gold and Petroza was basking in its glory. And let's be real, stuffing that chicken was a risky move. It ended up paying in dividends. As the competition rolled on, Petroza's stardom was on the rise. He showed everyone that he wasn't messing around and he's ready to take on any culinary challenge that comes his way. Finally tonight, Chef Ramsay did see past the mess. But in this next service from season eight, both the teams made sure their customers walked out with huge smiles and satisfied belly. In the seventh episode, Hell's Kitchen hosted a family night service featuring a regular menu as well as a kid's menu. The customers also received a welcoming plate of french fries, which is a perfect snack to munch on while waiting for the rest of the food. Let's go, Trev, I want those fries out, guys. Cooking for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds. That night, Gordon's family, along with Jerry Springer's family, were dining in. Neither of the teams exactly had a strong start, though. Everybody was really making some amateur mistakes. On the blue team, Vinny brought out extra portions of risotto. He only needed to make two portions, but he made four instead. And we all know how much Gordon hates food being wasted. Safe to say he wasn't too happy, Vinny. Cooking too much! Yes, chef. And it's a pure waste! All oh, this just wasted! Yes, chef. Keep and you were my bed, chef. You're toast! While Vinny works. As for the red team, Jillian's risotto needed way more pea puree. Come on, let's go! Yes, chef! The freaking was by the Rocky Star, both the teams kept pushing out orders, and 45 minutes into dinner service, they had served half of the appetizer. The blue team was feeling the pressure as they were handling a very special order. That ticket was for the table Ramsey's family was sitting at, and there was absolutely no room for error. Rob and Russell did their part of the job, but when it came to Vinny, he was way too sluggish with the risotto. What's more, he was so consumed by the pressure that he ended up doing something very dumb. Hurry up, Vinny! We've got to go up now! Yes, chef. I grabbed the risotto I had just sent up for the previous table. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, you got no idea just how he came up with that idea. I mean, how could he mix the old ones with the new one? I mean, really, can someone please remind him that he was cooking for Chef Ramsay's family? Finally, when Vinny brought the risotto to the pass, Gordon instantly knew what was up. And now, good old pal Vinny was in for another round of beration. So you just sent me that shit for, happens to be my family. <laughs> Another fresh risotto. Look at me, yes, you dirty little f And if you can't be bothered to do it, fuck off out of here. Do you want to go home? 
Danny was this close to getting the boot that night. However, he buckled down and worked hard to redeem himself. In no time flat, Chef Ramsay's family received all of their appetizers. Meanwhile, the red team began working on their entrees, and thanks to Trev's help, Sabrina was able to send out perfectly cooked meat. Oh, thank God! Back in the blue team, Boris was about to make a mistake, but thankfully Gordon stepped in to stop him. What was the mistake, you may ask? Well, words would never do it justice, so take a look at this pretty clip for yourselves. Stop! Why don't you board, you dirty fucker? Let's go! You've cooked that perfectly, and you're about to slice on that. Disgusting! Sorry, Chef. Oh. How can he miss something as basic as that? While both teams continued to work on the other tickets, out of nowhere, an argument broke out between Trev and Sabrina. I know most of the customers love the drama that unfolds within the walls of Hell's Kitchen, but I really hope that they would zip it. No, I'm just getting it hot, Trevor. Slowly, you gotta cook it It's all of a new. I know what I'm doing, Trevor. Can you stop giving me an attitude, dude? I know what I'm doing. Thank you. I know what I'm doing. Either way, it looks like Sabrina was so consumed by the heat of the argument that she sent out a chicken that was still clucking. Like, you gotta see this. Get in the fucking oven! Trevor, if you don't know what you're talking about, just keep your fucking mouth shut. In the blue kitchen, when the team was working on the entrees for Chef Ramsay's family, the only thing that was missing was the macaroni and cheese for Gordon's son. Possibly the easiest part of the meal, to be honest. But because it was taking way too much time, Gordon was forced to send out the rest of the entrees. I'll send it separate, okay? Service, please. Despite all the problems, both teams managed to bounce back and push the entrees and desserts out without much of an issue. Post the dinner service, Gordon was happy with the job well done and sent the customers with a satisfied experience. How did it feel? Awesome. Great, awesome. Chef. awesome. Now. However, that didn't mean Gordon ditched the elimination round for the night. Oh no. While the contestants prepared themselves for the eliminations, they had no idea what was in store for them. During the deliberations, after Nona and Rob said their piece, Gordon called down Rob and Dis. This one is a clean one. Get it on. Get back in line. As much as everybody was surprised by what was happening, Gordon wasn't done yet. Both of you. Hey, relax. It was a good service. Why should anyone go home? What can you say? Gordon really knows how to keep everybody on the edge. Now, don't get too carried away because coming up is a hat trick of dishes, all which impressed Gordon. Excellent at this point. In an episode from season 14, steak was the main ingredient and the black jackets were on the line. Things were beginning to get really intense when one station's meltdown caused its team to fall behind. This was during the dinner service, so this was doubly terrible. And an early front runner was sent home as well. After the unexpected turn of events, it was finally time for the ultimate culinary showdown, the King of the Hill Challenge. Gordon threw down the gauntlet, and the chefs were up to the challenge to present their best steak dishes, a battle royale with the throne as the prize. One by one, the chefs stepped up to present what would hopefully be their steak masterpieces. The competition was fierce, and the flavors would need to be explosive to stand a chance. As Gordon tasted each creation, the chefs were eyeing the throne, with each knowing that they could win it if they blew Gordon's mind. No easy feat, mind you. But if they wanted to walk out of there with a compliment under their belts, they need to put in their all. Well, either way, let's cut to the chase, shall we? Torrance, or should I say T, was first up to be judged, and she was definitely up to the task. T's dish was a mustard jus rib cap with veggies and bacon, and let me tell you, it was packing some next level flavors, I'm still very hungry. Gordon couldn't get enough. Praise her for cooking it beautifully while keeping the whole thing super cohesive. And let me remind you, that's the mark of a skilled chef, and Gordon would expect nothing less for something to impress him. I mean, it's absolutely nailed. The whole thing is cohesive. Definitely worth it. sitting on the throne. Good job. Guess what, though? T earned her spot on the throne, owning her victory and being crowned as the culinary queen that she is. It was a total triumph for her, and she proved she's got the chops to throw down in this kitchen. Plus, on top of that, people on Reddit were also over the moon about it. One fan wrote that they love how T is straight to the point, and even went to the extent of comparing her to the likes of Gordon. And I gotta say, I kinda second that one. The comment itself reads, I never thought I would like a contestant at any season right at the first time I saw them in the competition, but T is an exception. I love how straight to the point in expressing her thoughts, pretty much same level as Gordon. Loved it. Anyone thought the same? Ah, I did too there. I just do things. That's your name. I like it. Uh, but anyways, T isn't the only one who rocked the challenge. In the King of the Hill challenge, Megan scored a porterhouse steak from her locker and you could tell that she was pumped. And that passion carried forth into the kitchen. She was on fire, searing that porterhouse like a pro. When it was her turn to present her dish, Megan was oozing confidence. She was confident that she nailed it, and boy was she right. Comfortable in the chair of honor. The question is, will you remain in the throat? Megan, on, let's go. I definitely think I have this in the back. Her seared porterhouse came with an incredible red wine demi-sauce, and some well-chosen mushrooms took it to the next level. Gordon couldn't help but give her props. 
Isn't it so exciting that food can bring so much joy and change anyone's mood? Oh, it sure does change mine. I am so freaking hungry right now. I, I wonder if anybody else is the same. Let me know in the comments below and please order me a pizza. Anyway, Megan's heart was racing, but she had victory in the bag. She knew she killed it and she was standing proud waiting for the results. And guess what? Gordon was all about Megan's dish. Couldn't stop raving about it, in fact. He declared that her creation was so good it could dethrone tea from that throne she just claimed. The chair's yours. Great dish. Good job. Take the phone. Wow. You could see Megan's face from a mile away. She knew she brought her A-game, and Gordon's praise was like music to her ears. Well, I get the throne. See ya, T. <laughs> and hey, she's definitely loved by her fans. People on Reddit have been going on and on about how she was such a nice person and totally deserved her win. And this last one, though, was a nail biter. Michelle was the last one to step up, and Megan knew she was a force to be reckoned with. But with two insane dishes hitting the judging table before Michelle, she had a lot to live up to. She had mad skills and an awesome palate, and that definitely made Megan a little nervous, but she held strong to her belief that her steak was the best, no doubt. Michelle's dish was a grilled flank steak, seasoned with salt, pepper, chili powder, served with bean puree and mango pepper salsa. Oh my god, I'm hungry. <clears throat> Gordon took a bite, and well, you gotta see what Gordon had to say about it. Is this the dish that dethrones Megan, or would it be a complete disaster? Well, let's find out. It's delicious. I mean, you've got the cheapest cut, one of the most awkward, but it's a really good dish. Even though Michelle had the cheapest cut on the table, her flavors were still on point. After much deliberation, Ramsay made the call, and guess what? Michelle's dish was declared better than Megan's in a plot twist that nobody saw coming. That throne was changing owners like crazy. Megan, a culinary queen in her own right, took it all in stride. She knew Michelle brought her A-game to the table, and of course, in Hell's Kitchen, anything can happen. In the fifth episode of the season, Hell's Kitchen hosted a welcome surprise party for James. As the blue team won the challenge, they got the honor of serving James. Now, some teams might see that as a blessing and others a curse. Trust me when I say this, it was real good that the blue team was on James, because if it was the red team, well, it would have been an embarrassment. Yeah, the blue team knew what they had to do and were ready and willing to be able to throw down. <laughs> At the start of the welcome party, the blue team got the apps out immediately, and none of the dishes were rejected. It was so zen-like for me. But on the other side, the red team was in shambles thanks to Sabrina. It took not one, not two, but three attempts for the dish to be accepted. What are you doing? Just touch that then! Touch! No, really? Yes, chef. But the blue team was still cruising along without so much as a single problem. Well, maybe one problem, and that was with Jim. The poor guy was overwhelmed with that pile of steak orders that came in. Came in, and then another pile behind that. I went, so this is the game we're playing tonight. Jim was so overwhelmed that he didn't even answer Gordon when he asked for time. I mean, I feel for him, but the dude pretty much brought on a one-way ticket to Scream Town. Jim doesn't even answer me. Who's counting it down, Jim? Five minutes, chef. Five minutes. Jim! There's no way you can get overwhelmed like that on such an important night. Gordon wanted that night to be special for James, and with one team inevitably going to crash and burn in spectacular fashion, the other team going down as well would have been great. But thanks to Kevin's help, Jim got back on track and served James's table with nary an error. Back in the game, the blue team started pushing out Andres at a steady pace. Dave, who was just working with one hand, still managed to throw down a pretty stellar performance. Like delivering another entree to the pass. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Diners on the blue side are enjoying their food. In the midst of it all, though, Jim was seen poking the steaks with Tom. I really wish somebody would remind him that you're supposed to use your finger to feel the steak temperature and not the tong. I mean, what if the tong breaks open the steak? Well, because of that mistake, Jim had to go through the ringer a second time. Fingers. Yes, chef. There, touch. There we go. They're ready. Yes, when you got tongs and you're stubbing it, stubbing it, stubbing it, you're not performing appendicitis, you f Yes, chef. I'm gonna go up with steaks. Can I go? There's one saving grace there tonight. The f***ing Kevin stand behind him. Right behind you, right behind you. Coming down, gentlemen. Despite Jim's problems, the blue team finished their service and even helped the red team to wrap up their entrees. Hey, guys, get on a section with you, please, yes? Yes, chef. Oh! While the blue team jumped in to bail them out, the red team still had to face the embarrassing reality of not even one entree being served then. At least, not by their team. However, this next chef wasn't selected by the red team, but she went on to prove them all wrong. Amanda had a game plan, and it was all about keeping it simple while still packing a punch. She was the fifth one up from the blue team, and there was a lot on the line, not least of which being her confidence. But she knew she had something special with her pan-seared salmon and tomato fennel salad. As she presented her dish to Gordon, you could see the determination in her eyes. She seemed to figure that praise would be coming inevitably out of his mouth, and guess what? She was right. 
Love the fennel and tomato salad. That's a very solid four. Manda scored four points in a confidence booster like no other. She needed that validation, and boy, did she ever deliver. Not only that, but she also showed the red team what they were missing out on. It was a win for the blue team, and she proved she's a culinary force to be reckoned with. After all, that was some pretty sweet revenge, which of course is best served cold. Confidence for myself, and I needed these girls over here to see what they just lost. Sometimes it's a garnish, I'm told. Moving on to yet another stellar dish from the mastermind behind it, get ready to meet the culinary champ, Scott Cumming. He brought the heat in season 12 of Hell's Kitchen and emerges the ultimate winner, joining the ranks of Hell's Kitchen's elite alumni. As the winner, Scott's talents were truly recognized and he earned the coveted head chef position at none other than Gordon Ramsay's Pubs and Grill at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. That was a very nice title. With his skills and passion, Scott proved he's got what it takes to thrive in Hell's Kitchen and beyond. He's a force to be reckoned with and his journey was nothing short of epic. Now he's rocking the kitchen at one of the hottest spots in Vegas, delivering mouth-watering dishes and other culinary delights. Scott's making a name for himself and showing the world what he's made of, like the superstar that he is. But how did he get there? Well, for starters, let me show you the dish that sealed the deal. I'm always looking for a five out of five, but uh, anything positive out of Chef Ramsay's mouth, I'll take it. During the potato challenge, Scott was pretty much MIA in part one, but guess what? Blue team took home the W, 190. Now in part two, Scott was like, let's spice things up, and he decided to take on the challenging task of making a potato souffle. But hold up, Ramsey did in fact double check on that thought because again, it's a complex dish. I have to commend you on having the balls to put a souffle out there. Um but Scott was on a mission, and he knew he needed to pull out the trump card to end all trump cards in order to win. And pull it out, he did. Did. His masterpiece, an epic potato souffle with bechamel and fresh herbs. As he presented his dish, Scott was holding his breath, hoping for the best. It was like the calm before the storm, really. And guess what? Gordon did not disappoint. It was like, Scott, you got balls for making a souffle, and that's a hell of a compliment. And Gordon knew souffles are no joke, so to see Scott take that challenge head on must have been a proud moment for both of them. And that's to say nothing about the flavors he was packing, because boy, did he really bring the best souffle he could muster to the table. Five. Good yes. job. Thanks, Chef. Pretty well done. Good job. So Gordon gave him four points. Top marks in my book. While Scott might not have hit that perfect five, still scored big. And of course, I saved the best for last, and guess what? This contestant was competing right next to Scott. Scott might have gotten the equivalent of a pat on the back, but the compliment this contestant would get for her potato dish? Well, you just wait and see. Joy was one of the first three women to be in the pen during part one, but after seeing her teammates struggle to dig, she annoyingly called her team prima donnas. Before her dish was up for judgment, she was feeling the heat. She was hoping and praying that Gordon would love her pierogi stuff with rustic potatoes. And then the moment of truth arrived and Gordon took a bite and the kitchen fell silent. The anticipation had to have been killing them. I know it was killing me too. All those, all that food looks really good actually. Either way, in the end, Gordon was over the moon about him. Um, seasoning, proper. The balance is nice because you can identify the hero being the potato. She could hardly believe her ears. Gordon loved the flavors, and the potato, the star of the show, was taken center stage, which is absolutely necessary to win a potato challenge. And then came the moment we've all been waiting for, for Gordon to finally reveal the score. Drum roll, please. Five out of five. Perfect score, and the kitchen erupted in cheers and applause. Five out of five. She'd done it, nailed it with that perfect five, the ultimate triumph on a show like this. Ain't every day that a chef can bring a flawless dish out of this kitchen, but for Joy, well, it was just another Tuesday. And there you got it. Some of the best moments from the show where even Gordon Ramsay himself is impressed. While the road may have been rocky, filled with both risks and rewards, these chefs proved that passion and determination pay off big time. Anyway, if you think I missed your favorite moment that Gordon was stunned after what he just tasted, join me on my channel's Discord server, where we can continue this discussion and more for free. And for those of you who want a little extra, I've got an exclusive server just for you. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier. All that said and done, I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.